holders. So we would continue with, with this section in the same series. I'll be looking at an example. So if we have some a table like this, we have to measure theta, to measure time, or to measure t2, then we have to measure the minimum and um, the mean time, that is the average of the two time, and then we have to measure length. Of course, there cannot be an experiment that has all these parameters, but then I want to use that as an example. So if we have all these things, just to show you how to enter your values, so if we have all, all these things to enter, this theta, like I told you for angle, measuring angle using protractor, the possible values should be to one degree. One degree, that is no place of decimal. So one possible value we can have here for theta is, say, 45. So I don't need to write 45 degree again. Why? Because I already have theta in degree. There's no point writing 45 degree and so on so as well as what i explained now we have time this is the first time say t1 this is probably you meet this kind of readings in a pendulum experiment so if we have t1 probably we measure the first time in the oscillation we one of the possible answers we can get is something like 15.2 so we can have 15.2, you notice that I didn't write 15.2 seconds, I didn't write 15.22. So it should be to one place of decimal, why? Because time has a 0 0.1 um, degree of accuracy, so this should be 15.2 seconds. Then, since we have seconds here already as a unit, you don't need to repeat, start repeating the units again, that's the reason you're writing them here. Now we have T2. So you have um, 15.0, so you, you measure that it's 15, of course, to one place of decimal, you add 0 0.0, so it should be 15.0 seconds. Then this mean time, so this is the average of the two times you measure. So taking the average of this, I would have something like 15.2, you can punch that with your calculator. Let me do that. 15.2 plus 15.0, taking the average divided by 2. So I'll have 15.1. So I'll have 15.1. Now, since this is a calculated value, you can write it as 15.100. This is a calculated value, no longer a measured value. So I'll write it as 15.1. 0, 0, 0, 0. So then you have length in the experiment. Of course, length you measure it using the meter rule. So one of the possible values you can have with this is say 30.2. So of course to one place of decimal. Very important. To one place of decimal, 30.2. Then the unit is already here. There's no need to repeating the unit here. So this is a very good example now. The next thing I'll be showing you here is how to choose a scale. So I would be, I told you I'll be doing experiments, different experiments. So for now, let me just show you with some a set of values how to choose a scale, which is very important. Now after that, I'll be going next to an experiment. I'll be starting with prism experiment, rectangular, rectangular prism experiment, which is very important. I urge you to follow this series till the end. You will enjoy it. It will help you so well in your exam. At the end, you will return back to thank us. So the next thing is how to choose scale. I'll be using some set of values. So I have some set of values like this. Now I'm to plot these values. I'm to plot them on either of the axes. Now I'll be choosing to plot them on the vertical axis. Of course, when you want to plot your graph, I have a graph sheet here I'll be using as an example. You want to plot a graph. One of the first things you should do is you write the title of that graph. You write the title at this, at this top part of your graph sheet. So the title, very important, so that anybody that is marking it, anybody that sees it knows exactly what you have done. A graph, so you write it like title. So you have something like title.
a grass a grass of this against this very important tied to a graph of time in seconds against this so very important and then the next very important thing that should come with your graph is the scale that is very important that is what we're dwelling now so your scale which is the next thing so you write scale so let's this represent this now from the graph sheet we have here each box these are small small boxes we have different kinds of graph sheets so you should try to observe the type you are using probably measure it with the meter rule to know the to know the length of each box very important some of them are not exactly 1 cm or say 2 cm but then if it is close to 1 cm then you assume that it is 1 cm box very important now the graph sheet I have here, each box actually represents 1 cm. So from year to year is 1 cm, from year to year is 1 cm. Yet so each of these boxes represents 1 cm. Each of these boxes represents 1. So this is a 1 by 1 cm box. So of course, choosing our scale, we'll be saying let's so the setting let 1 cm or 2 if you're using two boxes to represent a particular unit then you'll be saying let 2 cm represent that particular scale you have chosen so i'll be using this as an example to choose a scale now i'm very important so i want you to follow and listen attentively so that you get this concept once and for all now i have a set of values 0.541 like that up till 0.945 and i want to plot that on my vertical axis i want to plot that on my vertical axis so let's assume these are values for time in seconds just an assumption we're assuming that this is a value for time in seconds and we are plotting that on the vertical axis we are plotting that on the vertical axis so one of the first things you should do is, when you have chosen your skill, don't forget to write the title of this axis. In physics, we don't say y and x axis. We say y and x axis in mathematics. But in physics, you tell us the particular parameter you're plotting. If you're plotting time, you write it time in seconds. If you're plotting time square, as t square, you write it t square in seconds square. If you're plotting length, you write it. You don't tell us y against x. Note that that is very important. Now, how do we choose this scale? How do we how do we choose a scale that would suit this value? Because one one thing you should know is this is a very this is a big box. It's a quite big box. Now, for you to get an accurate slope, for you to obtain an accurate slope from your graph. One of the things you should do is make sure that whatever scale you, you choose you should be able to cover a good part of this rectangle. Your scale should be able to plot your graph so that you cover a good part of this rectangle. See, this part is okay. You understand? So if you plot your graph and it clusters one, that is one of the reasons why when you finish plotting and you check your slope, you discover that your slope is very far. But I told you I'll be teaching you how to know whether what you have done is correct. Then you get your slope, you compare it to a standard. There are standards. I'll be teaching you that how to know if it is correct. Now, so you should make sure that any scale you're choosing, it should plot your graph such that your points are if they are spread all over the graph. That is to say, it covers a big, a good portion of your of this rectangle. That is very important. That's why this concept I'll be teaching you it's very important so you don't need to stress your head you don't need to stress your head to get a good skill so by just calculation you get something good now so I'll be using we'll be using the concepts of range now the biggest value now on my table the highest value I have here is 0 0.9 and the smallest is 0 0.5 so what we'll do to accommodate all these values I'll round this, take this to the next number that is immediately greater than 0 0.9. The next number that is immediately greater than 0 0.9 is going to be 1. I will reduce this, I'll take this down so that I can accommodate all these values. So I'll take this to the next number that I, 
that is less than 0 0.541, the next number. So this I'm going to round it up to 0 0.5 and take this to 1. Of course, 1 is bigger than this, so it can accommodate 0 0.9. 0 0.5 is less than 0 0.541, so it can accommodate this. So I'll be using that to get my range. So the first thing to do is to get the range of those points. So my range are, as you know, range is the difference between the highest and the lowest. So the highest, which I've approximated, is going to be 1, 1.0 minus the smallest value, which I've approximated here, is going to be 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And the difference is, of course, 0 0.5. Now, all you do from here is you check your graph. Now, how much space do I want my graph to cover? Of course, I told you your graph, you get a very more accurate slope when your graph covers a good percentage of your of the left hand. So I want it to go, cover a good portion of this. So what do I do? I will count the boxes. Now, I want to use 2CM. I want two boxes to represent one unit, to represent the unit I'm going to choose. So now I'm going to count. I'm going to start from here, that is from this box. I'll leave this portion. So I want to start my graph from this point. I want this to be my origin. So what I'm going to do from here to here is one. From here to here is two. Is three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. So I want eight boxes. I want my graph to cover that the distance from here to this point, which is eight boxes. Of course, I counted two, two, two boxes as one, which is two CM. So I want my graph to cover eight boxes. That is one, two, up to eight. So I want it to cover from this point to this point, which is eight boxes. So what do I do? I'm going to divide that range by the number of boxes I want it to cover. So 0 0.5 divided by 8, I will have, can punch that, 0 0.5 divided by 8. 0 0.5 divided by 8 will give me 0 0.06. 0 0.06. Now, so this is a very good skill. This is a very good skill that can work for my graph. You see, you discover that I don't need to stress my brain. From this now, this is a skill that can work. But one thing I would advise, I, I always advise students, is that when you get values like this, you can take it to the next number that is easier for you to add up. And if you that this 0 0.06, I can use, I can decide to use 0 0.05. So if what this thing tells me is that any scale, any value I choose around 0 0.06 should work. If I choose 0 0.05, it should work. 0 0.07 should work. 0.04 should work, 0.06 should work. So all those values around this should work for a good scale. I would prefer to use 0.05, reason being that it's easier for me to add 0.05, 0.1, like that 0.15. So it's easier for me to add without even a new calculator. So I'll be using a scale, I'll be using a scale of 0.05. On the vertical axis. On the vertical axis. So what I'm going to write as my scale now is that let 2cm, let 2cm represent 0.05 units on the t axis. Let let 2cm represent. 0.05 units on the T axis. So this is my scale. So CM is going to represent 0.05 units on this axis. So and the same thing is applicable to this same axis. You do the same thing. So this concept works all the time. It helps you whenever you have however how close the values may be. It helps you you just do this difference and then divide by the number of boxes you want to use. You get a suitable scale. So I'll be stopping here in this video. Now in the next in the next video I'll be doing I'll pick a prism experiment.
this is an experiment. So in my next video, I'll pick an experiment like this. And then we'll solve everything together. I'll be teaching you how to draw this without having, without having to be in the lab, without using any of those apparatus. You will draw this, how to measure the angles, do all those things by calculation. We will get all the values we need and fill up this table. Then we will plot our graph, then answer the questions here. So we will be doing that for different experiments. So please, do try to follow this series from the very beginning till the end. It will help you in your exams. We will be looking at various experiments. So thanks for watching this video. Please. Do like and subscribe to our channel. You'll be getting more videos. We'll have, video, we'll have a series in maths. We'll have series in physics practical. We'll be having series in chemistry. And then some other courses. So please do subscribe. Share with your friends. Like, share to your class groups and all those things. It will help them. Thanks once more for watching. This is Elo from Prime Concept Academy.